York City Conjure in Birmingham, Alabama. This is the metaphysical store to be if you're anywhere in Alabama. They have everything you can think of, especially hoodoo items. Mambo Baptiste is the owner and she can answer any question that you have. So come by and see me. I'll be here all weekend. All right, well, what about um, Magic City Conjure? What do you think about that? Like what, what makes it stand out from any other store? Magic City Conjure is really special because she's intentional. I know I, that word is kind of overused, but Mambo is really, really intentional with the way that she gifts, with the people that she brings in, with the way that she does her spell crafting for her customers. We do boutique or bespoke spells as well. So she's just really careful and protective about the shop in and of itself and about her customers. She's not going to bring in a book or source material that's just written by somebody who didn't do the research, right? You, you can trust what's in the shop and you can trust the people that work there. So, what is the most magical moment in your life? The most magical moment? You gotta pick one. Um, that moment for me didn't happen in circle, it happened in private. I asked um, one of the goddesses I work with to come sit with me, and she did, and my niece was really, really, really sick, and it wasn't one of the goddesses that I would have originally reached out to, but again, exposure with the shop and participating in this and we'll see you again I'm sure so here at Magic City Conjure we have everything you can imagine we have candles We have herbs of plenty, beautiful library. Tarot cards, statues. You do? <laughs> this is Justin, we're here at Magic City Conjure. So Justin, we have some questions here for you. Um, so what do you think, what is the meaning of life? The meaning of life, I believe it's subjective. Everybody has their own meaning and purpose to what they're supposed to be doing here, but I think we're all supposed to express in some form of art or creativity of uh, just expression in some way, some form or shape. But uh, the meaning of life is subjective. Everybody. What about where do you think we're going? Where we're going after we pass from here? Mm -hmm. The after. I like to think of the astral realm. And I think it's just levels upon levels of ascension or descension. You can descend or as ascend. Like heaven or hell? Or do you think yeah, it's. Levels to it. Levels okay. to it? Yeah. What about. Let's go ahead and kick into. Remember, I was telling you there's a couple different. Uh, sets of questions here. Let's go to spiritual beliefs. You said that you're pretty open to talk about that. So we're talking about heaven and hell. What are your spiritual beliefs? Do you mind talking about those? Yeah, uh, I believe in a higher power, but uh, I like to take something from every religious belief, uh, Hinduism, Buddhism, you know, Eastern mysticism, I guess you can say, it helped me a lot with my inner, you know, Western seems to be a lot more outer, external with God. Eastern is more internal, you know, with meditation and coming into yourself. So I think it's like a balance of the yin and the yang. And uh, yeah, I kind of just went a lot of places with that. But my belief is, yeah, it's a higher power and uh, yeah, just positive vibes. Have you had any um, 
I don't know, any trouble like trying to explore your spirituality here in the South because... Yeah, earlier I did, yeah. Uh, back when I was 15, it's like when it started, it was a church I was attending. And, uh, I moved around a lot. And, uh, they asked me if I had a church I attended regularly. And they, uh, I said no. And they was like, well, you're going to go to hell because you don't have a church to go to. And uh, that really uh, shattered a lot of my beliefs for me. And for a minute there, I was kind of atheist. Just finding my way, but uh, just uh, tapping more into my intuition and things like that. I've seen I've been kind of led on my path. That was a part of my path going through that. Going through that. Yeah, to kind of get a deeper uh, meaning of God, I guess you could say. What do you uh, think is your um, your hardest obstacle that you had? And then what is your most beautiful experience that you've had? Like, what's the toughest, and then what's the best? Spiritually? Yeah. Hardest obstacle spiritually. <clears throat> faith. You know, just stepping out on faith, you know, trusting in that power, you know. Because we have our science and our process, and we want to know what's next. You know, it's scary to walk in the dark, but uh, you got to walk on faith on some things, and we trust in that higher power. So not everything is planned out. Um, that was an obstacle. And I still struggle with that, but I'm a lot better with that today. And uh, what was the other question? What is the most beautiful, magical experience you've had with your faith, with your spirituality? Um, mm, probably my 30th birthday when I went to uh, Egypt. Uh, I was looking at the pyramids, and I was really at a down point in my life. It just felt like I was just wandering and had no purpose and uh, it was just this voice came to me and it just said uh, nothing was wasted. You know, everything happened for a reason. Um, and I just kind of seemed like life was like a ripple effect. I was looking at it from like a financial point but everywhere I went I kind of gained something, you know, with talking with people more or my emotions and things like that is just it's a journey life is a journey I want you to know something I'm very jelly right now why is that because you went to Egypt <laughs> I'm just saying yeah I the have... whole thing right there I'm gonna have to replay this so I can hear the rest of the because all I heard after the whole Egypt thing <laughs> I'm just thinking in my head I'm jelly I that's all <laughs> for my 30th I've never done anything for my birthday so I was like 30 I need to do something yeah, I would say that's that's doing something. Okay, well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Yeah, also. I some good I yeah you did. Thank uh, you so much, and blessed you. be. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about astral travel? Um, so it's a gift that I've possessed since I was about three, um, or at least that I was aware of having since I was about three. Um, typically. It's when you're in a very deep sleep state is when it happens with me most. Um, I am capable of getting myself into a trance state while awake to get to the point of projecting or having an out-of-body experience, as some would call it, astral traveling. But essentially what it is is when your spirit or your soul separates from your body and you're on another dimension, so you're within another realm or on another plane. Um, it was not always an easy thing to do. It took me years to really understand what was happening when it happened. I didn't have much control over it. And there's some pretty scary things on the other side. Um, so I have to heed a warning to anybody who's interested in this or who has encountered an experience like this and you know wanting to develop it more things can follow you back I have had that experience which was not fun and um there's just all kinds of things you have to account for so you're going to encounter a bunch of otherworldly entities but there's a lot of good there too um, you know, a lot of us in the astral or who can astral project are given a task, like there's a reason we have this gift. Maybe it's to meet somebody who's crossing over so that you can help them push through um, this kind of purgatory realm that's on the other side. So definitely do your setting and always use protection. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, thank you so much You're for your help. Welcome. Blessed be. Blessed be. This is the Curiosity Cottage. It's another fantastic shop in the south. Now, this is in Augusta, Georgia. We're going to enter and see what we can find. <laughs> Hey, we're here at the Curiosity Cottage in Augusta, Georgia, and this is Sebastian. Hi, Sebastian. Hi. Okay, so, Sebastian, what do you think happens? What happens after we die? I feel like that one is more based off people's personal beliefs. So, when we die, this is how I see it now. Hold on. Everyone has their own individual take on it. The way I see it is when we die, the energy that we had has to go somewhere, whether it's reincarnation or your energy is moved to a different piece into a higher plane and that's your heaven or your paradise however you want to say it or if your person believes it was that you were a bad person you're hell it just depends on your personal beliefs and how you surround that with you and what your energy goes to i hope that makes sense that makes sense okay so as far as spiritual beliefs do you have any that you want to share with anyone i don't really have any any one way like we were talking about earlier I have a tricky past with spirituality in general mainly coming from being raised Southern Baptist and growing to resent and very closely hate most organized religions because of it so spirituality I still have issues separating spirituality from the religion aspect of it and because of that I don't really have a spiritual Words, words, spirituality. <laughs> Let's stick with that. The spirituality at this point in my life. So here at the Curiosity Cottage, do you find them being pretty open as far as accepting people that don't have a spiritual path? Yes. They are the they are some of the greatest people ever. They and are they guide you. Extremely open and sweet, and they will gently nudge. <laughs> in the, better direction away from the darker path that you could be taking because lord knows krista ain't gonna let nobody do themselves dirty in her presence <laughs> that man is not any better <laughs> she's a little more blunt <laughs> but we love them anyway that's right okay well thank you so much sebastian of course bye
So people asked if there were uh, ghosts in this beautiful mansion that we were staying in. No, but there are these scary stairs you'll see here in these pictures. Um, anybody that knows me knows that I'm terrified of heights, terrified of heights. So you'll see me sitting here at the bottom of the stairs coming up in this next picture where I was refusing to go up the stairs. And yes, I did finally go up the stairs. I climbed up backwards that way, right? You see right there. Um, there's an eight minute video of me doing so, which we won't show. Mm -mm, no way. One of my favorite parts of my trip was going to Sarah by the River, which is located in Hamilton, Ohio. It's only 20 minutes from Cincinnati, one of the best metaphysical stores I have ever been to, let alone outside of Cincinnati. So make sure if you make it up to Cincinnati, you stop by Sarah by the River. I was also blessed to get to interview Isaac Reed, who is the founder of Witches Moon Market. He talks a little bit about uh, paganism and uh, the pagan uh, community in Hamilton, Ohio, but the interview gets a little um, interesting twist and goes down a little path that's, uh, well, kind of esoteric. So let's watch that and see what happens there. You're the founder of the Witch's Moon Market. Can you tell us a little bit about it when it started? Absolutely. So this is actually the uh, first year uh, that we began. Um, I've been kind of watching the idea take place in Texas where they have a little bit of a market similar to it. Uh, they've been doing it for probably about five, six years down there. And so I kind of watched them work out some of the kinks and kept thinking this is a great idea to bring to Ohio. Um, specifically, once I moved to Hamilton, I thought it was the perfect location. We're right here on the river and it helps add to the energy of the market itself. Um, so what I did was in April, I finally began the finalization process of working with the city of Hamilton to get the permits and begin drawing the attention of some different vendors. Uh, the first thing that I wanted to make sure of is that the market was designed for small business owners, not so much the brick and mortar companies that already have great opportunities um, and have a storefront sign every single day. I wanted the small vendor that is still struggling to get their way on Etsy or maybe going to different craft shows, farmer's markets. And I found quite a few of my actual vendors at the farmer's market, believe it or not, here in Hamilton and different parts of Cincinnati and Springfield. So it's designed to help build them a clientele base that at the same time promotes uh, witchcraft, paganism, including oddities and curiosities. That's interesting. All right, can you tell us a little bit about the pagan community out here? Actually, yeah. The pagan community here is extremely friendly in Hamilton and Butler County. Um, I've had a few different conversations with uh, uh, Randy Bell, who is one of the heads for the pagan county, uh, Butler County pagan community. Um, I've talked with him. I've talked with different shop owners uh, in the area, such as uh, Dana. She's wonderful. And um, it's just, it's extremely welcoming and friendly environment for the most part. Uh, they try to be inclusive and the best part is is that it's so broad spectrum that you end up with, you've got some shops that have a little bit more of a light energy that's all about the peace and love that some people are looking for and you've got other shops that are a little bit more darker um, and go for a little bit more of a uh, Santorini type feel even. Um, so there's something for everybody and I think that's great because it's it helps everybody actually in the community and here in Hamilton and Butler County kind of blend together nicely. So a lot of the uh, viewers yeah. of this station are mostly practice light, okay? Or they don't practice anything, they're curious. Yes. So why don't you give it just a, a tad bit of information on the darker side? Because you said that you practice a little bit of the darker side. Absolutely. So the darker, darker side of things can be a little bit more ritualistic. Um, I mean, it's not to say that the light side doesn't have ritual. It does. But the darker side requires a bit more ritual to it and it does require a little bit more concentration a little bit more focus uh, and a little bit more ritual um, depending upon what type of baneful arts or darker side you're looking to go towards it could involve uh, where to some people it can look like a dark side of something that a Haitian voodoo practitioner would do with sigils and everything on the, the ground um, but it's a little bit of a quite a difference there but uh, some of them choose to involve use of uh, blood magic. Some of them will actually use flesh. 
uh, including cutting flesh from their own bodies or bodies of others that are usually willing. Um, it's a common denominator as a rule that there's no Wiccanry that is followed. Uh, there's no threefold laws. There's no karma to be feared for retribution. It's you do what you have to do because it needs done. Whether it means that you're actually the one serving the justice towards others or doing something to help advance yourself in any area or aspect of your life, including from health to finances to employment. Um, where when you talk about the people that do more of the light working or the other aspects of practitioners, um, they're more self-conscious. They're more likely to think, well, how's this going to interact with somebody else's energy? How am I going to possibly affect somebody else? Um, dark practitioners don't think that way. It's just a matter of, you know, I need this. I have to move in. I have to be advanced in this. I'm going to do it. Okay, um, that's that's interesting. Uh, let me uh, let me ask you this: What would you like to say to the viewer? Educate okay. yourself. So maybe get a mentor. Absolutely, get a mentor. Get someone that's not just a mentor. Get someone that you know that actually is knowledgeable in their their craft, their practices. Um, vet them very carefully because. Even in dark practitioners, there's those who can be very cunning. Um, a close dear friend of mine, you know, used to teach, and I don't agree with the way he teaches, but he's a great guy, friend of mine. Um, he would, for instance, start students with uh, using a key and teaching them to hold a key, look through the keyhole, and focus the energy of sucking through the keyhole a light string while someone else was sitting on their side. And what you were doing was basically drawing out their life force through the keyhole. You wouldn't tell them that's what they were doing. You wouldn't explain to them that you can only do this, you know, so many times before you actually could potentially kill the person. And um, in one instance, he had a group of a couple of people, and they all chose the exact same person to draw energy from over and over. And she was extremely weak and uh, ended up being hospitalized because of it. Wow. Um, so definitely vet who you're going to learn from and understand the consequences that can come with it. Don't dabble. Exactly. Do not dabble by any means. It's not something you can just jump on YouTube or online and, and think that you can find, you know, the information yourself. The scary part is it there it, it's out there and it's not done correctly, so Absolutely. Take it seriously. Yes. Okay. Well thank you for that information. Um well, okay. thank you so much for coming out. I, I so much appreciate it. Is there Absolutely. anything else you'd like to say? I think this is fantastic, and uh, I can't wait to see the success you're going to have with all of this. It's brand thank new, you. brand new station, so brand new show. Definitely. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Okay, Isaac and I were talking, and I found out something pretty interesting. So, Isaac, what did you just tell me? There is no such thing as a hereditary good witch. Um during all the different witch trials all across the entire world, because every country has had witch trials, the families that were naturally uh, dark witches or dark practitioners, we handed over the good families. We pointed them out. And a lot of times even, we were the ones who were actually sitting there for the execution courts to judge them. So that way we could eliminate them. And so when people today come to me and they're like, oh, you know, I'm a hereditary good witch. I inform them that they're definitely not a hereditary person that's a good witch. You can be hereditary psychic, hereditary medium, you can have different small gifts along those lines, but if you go asking for your second great-grandmother or grandfather's grimoire to find all of their classic good practices, it doesn't exist because those are long gone. Um, whereas a lot of the dark practitioners can go and find their second and third great-grandparents' grimoires and see all the hexes and curses and uh, different baneful arts very easily. Wow, that's pretty interesting. Um, is there anything else that, that, that you got? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting back here talking to him. And he's full of all kinds of information. <laughs> so. it's, it's kind of just one of those things where, you know, you just... I've had a lot of different students throughout the years, and so you hear different things like, oh, I'm this, oh, I'm that, and it's just, you know... It's one of those things where it's like it's great, and I love that everybody has some sort of ability to them. Just you know, 
again, get a good teacher. And if you're going to claim something, just check into your background. You know, that's the big thing. Just research your family tree line, research it. Because even with that, you know, everybody at some point, you know, practice some of the dark arts. Um, so if you have like this long line of like nothing, and all of a sudden you've got a psychic ability or a mediumship ability, chances are somebody down your line was actually practicing something dark at one point. Well, that's interesting. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Okay. And here we are at Seraph by the River, the most interesting, eclectic, witchy, pagan-friendly shop that you probably have ever seen. From the moment you walk in, you feel the amazing energy of all of the crystals. It's a very interesting mix of crystal metaphysical shop plus like a boutique beautiful clothing, silk saris, blue jeans, boho clothes. The most amazing incense right here in Ohio, Wildberry from Oxford, right here at Seraph by the River. Handmade smudge fans, ethically sourced crystals, such a great shop. So that concludes our show. I thank you for watching, and we will catch you next time on On the Road with Atalanta.